Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Joelle Fawcett, and this is the Soul Method Podcast. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. This is your host and the founder of The Soul Method. My name is Joelle Fawcett, and here at The Soul Method, our mission is to be your guide, to heal from the past, be at peace in the present, and create a future you love. And welcome to Season 2, Episode 12 of the Soul Method Podcast, titled Creativity, Sensuality, and Embracing Your Inner Outlaw. And I have to apologize. I know it has been a minute since I have recorded a podcast. I actually got COVID at the beginning of the new year. And let me tell you, that is no joke. (laughs) Like, that knocked me on my ass. And It has taken me a minute to recover, but I am finally feeling back to my normal self and ready to get back into the things that matter so much to me, such as this podcast and the commitment I have to all of you to being here every week. So I am back and excited to be here. And this topic that we are going to talk about today, I have been waiting to do this episode. I've been waiting for a little while. I felt like we had to cover some ground before we could really get into this topic. So if you have not listened to previous episodes of the podcast, specifically the episodes that are two through five of season one, as well as the episode in season two on the Divine Feminine, I would recommend you go ahead and start there and then come on back and join us here at this episode, because those ones really kind of lay the foundation for what we're going to talk about today. So getting into it, I know that the title for this podcast seems a little ironic or a little bit of an oxymoron, right? Like, how does creativity have to do with embracing your inner outlaw? And, you know, it's kind of funny for me to put that title in here because um, I am around a lot of people who consider themselves outlaws in today's world. I'm around a lot of motorcyclists, a lot of people who belong to groups and clubs. And it's interesting to me to put that word in here in the way that we are going to define it today, because it's very different than what, you know, Vogue defines it as in our culture, which has a lot to do with TV shows, maybe with movies referring to like the Wild West or, you know, Billy the Kid or you know, the movie Tombstone, something like that, or even the TV series like Sons of Anarchy or the Mayans. Um, So we're not talking about out loud in relating to what our culture defines it as or what the men define it as who I spend some time with in my daily life just through association. So we are going to redefine that today and take a look at what this word really means and what it means to live a creative life. So let me start with asking you a question. Do you believe in magic? Do you believe in the bizarre, the miraculous, the unexplainable, the weird, and the strange? You know, I almost titled this podcast Embracing Your Inner Weird, because that's really what we're going to talk about today. Do you believe in magic? Can you access that part of yourself? Because as a foundation, let me state this, that to be creative is to be human. 
Okay, there is no such thing as a non-creative human being. We are all creative as a part of our human existence. Now, depending on how you define creativity, you might not identify with that necessarily, but creativity at its origin, in its roots, is something that all people have as a part of their existence. Creativity is the opposite of linear thinking. And the creative energy is feminine energy. It is free-flowing, free-thinking, and like I said, non-linear. It is non-rational. It is emotional. And this is why I recommended you go and listen to that episode on the Divine Feminine. Because in that, I talk about how every single human being, we are all yin and yang, right? There is no gender identity relating to the masculine and feminine energies. These are energies that all of us have inside of us, and they are connected to different centers within us. And in order for us to live as full, authentic human beings, we must access both of those sides of ourselves. And in that episode, I talk about how our culture today has really glorified and emphasized the element of the masculine energy, which are very linear, very rational thinking, very non-emotional. And you can almost imagine it in straight lines, right? Everything fits in a box. Everything makes sense. And men do tend to lean more that way, right? Men tend to be more in touch naturally with their rational side, whereas women naturally tend to be more in touch with their emotional side, more in touch with how they're feeling. And the reality is that we all need both. Every single person in the world, like I said, needs to be in touch with both their emotional and their rational in order to live a full authentic life. Right. I'm sure we all have met people. I actually can think of some very specific people now that I'm thinking about it, um, where they are so rational, right? They're so in their head. It's almost like you have to pull them back down to earth to have a conversation with them, right? Like they're so ungrounded, so either like philosophical or so disconnected from their emotional state. They are living almost in the clouds and unable to get grounded in their own body. Now, some people end up in that state because of traumatic experiences in their life where they kind of pop out of their body and being here and being present becomes something that's really scary, which is totally different um, than somebody who kind of chooses that life, who chooses to be so philosophical and so rational where everything is a thought process and thinking about it, everything has to make sense. And I'm sure you can think of people like that where sometimes having conversations with them can be frustrating or challenging because they're so in the clouds, they can't get back down to earth. Right. So we have these two energies, the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine, the rational and the emotional. And to live a fully expressed life, we need to tap into both. One of my absolute favorite books on the topic of creativity is by Elizabeth Gilbert. It is called Big Magic. And you probably have heard her name before in relation to her worldwide bestseller, Eat, Pray, Love. And this book, Big Magic, is all about accessing that creative side of yourself and what it looks like to live a creative life. And in that book, one of the ideas that she shares that I absolutely love is this idea of rationality versus emotionality. And one of the traps that she talks about in this book and that our culture has l relied on so heavily that goes back, you know, probably a few hundred years is when we get too rational. When we are unable to access 
the emotional side of ourselves. We tend to get very caught in our ego. We tend to get very caught in that little voice in our heads that wants to make sense of everything. And we all know that little voice. I've talked about this before, and I go into it at length in season one, episode three of this podcast. But it is that little voice that is always with us. It springs to life in childhood as we learn language, and it stays with us throughout our entire life. It is a part of the human experience. I don't believe anyone ever completely silences the ego, the little voice in our head. And it talks all the time and tends to make no sense. And this little voice in our head is very committed to having everything make sense around us and being right. And there is a lot of danger in living our lives caught in the trap of relying completely on this rational thought, on that ego going around and around in our heads, needing everything around us to make sense. And the ego has a huge fear of being wrong, of things not working out. Now, originally, the ego springs to life as a modality of protection for everyone on earth, right? The reason it wants everything around us to make sense, the reason it wants to be right, is so it can protect us. The problem is that in order to access our natural creativity, in order to access the feminine energy inside all of us that is free-flowing, we must let go of this sense of right and wrong. And that's impossible to do if we are trapped in the Ferris wheel, in the merry-go-round of the right and wrong, of the ego trying to make sense of everything, because it is completely opposite of that free-flowing feminine energy that is creativity. In her book, Elizabeth Gilbert talks about this and connects it to our cultural commitment to Christian suffering. I thought this was so interesting because she really goes into detail on how we as a culture have this commitment to rationalizing our creativity to the point where we need to make it quote unquote right or we need to become this idea of a suffering artist in order to justify our creative expression and i think we all can look at either historical figures or current figures or maybe even you who are very committed to the idea of the suffering artist and while this stereotype is often glorified in our culture. It also is an incredibly dysfunctional way to connect with your own inner creativity. It takes this free-flowing, amazing, sensual, palpable energy of our natural groundedness and tries to fit it into the boxes of right and wrong, good or bad, and straighten out all those intricate lines into straight lines. And what makes this what should be a beautiful, natural, free-flowing process into a torturous experience. I think one of the first things we need to do as a culture when it comes to creativity and one of the first things you can do is to release the commitment that your art, whatever type of expression it is, that your creative self, that your emotional self needs to make sense, that it needs to be justified to be permitted to speak, that it needs to save the world or change anything in any way. And when you think about it, 
it is kind of sick that we have gotten to this place in our culture where we glorify this idea of the suffering artist and somehow the misery of our creativity becomes the legitimacy of the craft itself. Release those ideas. There is no right or wrong, good or bad, professional or amateur when it comes to creative energy and outlaw living. This type of living is based on the experience of joy, the experience of authentic expression, and the experience of peace. It's the moment that we invite the judge, the moment that we look at a piece of art and that little voice springs to life in our head saying, oh, you're not as good, it's not this, it should be that, blah, 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 that we immediately exit joy. And instead of becoming this amazing free-flowing expression, we instead become the martyr that we have chosen our creativity as our whip where we use our passions to punish ourselves because they aren't fitting properly into someone else's box of right and wrong. I, for one, am not interested in a life of suffering, especially not when it comes to my creativity. Now, if you're sitting out there thinking, well, I'm just not a creative person, Right, I'm going to challenge you because like I said when I started, I don't think it is possible for a human being to not be simultaneously creative in our authentic expression of self. And here's why. It's because in our authentic state, these channels both the rational and the emotional channels of our existence are channels that spirit uses to make pieces of itself manifest. And to be human, to live this life, is to be of the ground, of this body made of earth, and then filled with sky, filled with breath. And it's in the perfect conjoining of these two things, of the earth, of the feminine, and of the air, of the masculine, that we truly are able to exist. And so I don't believe it's possible for someone to exist without body in the human experience. We all are born with a connection to earth, which is a connection to creativity. I started out the podcast by asking what you believe. Do you have the capacity to believe in something that is not rational, like magic, like weird, strange, unexplainable things? I believe that creativity is based on the expansiveness or the capacity of your own beliefs. Now, here's the catch here. We live our lives and experience life according to the expansiveness of our own beliefs. If we don't believe something is possible, we won't experience it. And so if you are someone who is committed to neglecting your emotional self and only staying in your rational only staying in the things that make sense, in the things that are linear lines, then you are committed to missing out on an entire part of this human experience. Our creative expression, like I said, is in this feminine energy. It is in the free-flowing, in the emotional and connected to our first, second, and third chakras. And later this year, I am going to do an entire series on the chakra system. So if you're hearing this word chakra and you're like, what on earth is that? It's okay. We'll go into all of it. 
But a basic foundation is that these are energy centers in the body. There are lots of them. However, there are eight main ones that go up the center of the body. And the first three are connected to earth, are below the heart, and are connected to these concepts of free-flowing emotion, of identity, of non-linear, irrational experiences. And specifically creativity is connected to our sacral chakra, which is the second chakra of the body. The Sanskrit word for the chakra is svadhisthana. And it may seem contradictive to say, wait, hang on, like creativity living in the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is also the home to our sensuality and our sexuality. And just think for 10 seconds how much this connects. Because as non-sexual as most creative expression is, We cannot help but describe these creative things in our lives as our passions, as things that come from that same sensual energy. And there is no valid separation between the sensual and the creative. Passion is creativity. I see so often, because of the culture we live in today, that glorifies the rational, that glorifies straight lines, that we become disconnected to these lower chakras. We become disconnected to our groundedness and to our passion, which, as you can imagine, has multiple repercussions on our lives. If you cannot connect to your creativity, you're going, most likely, you struggle to connect sensually and sexually with yourself or with your partner because there is no disconnect there is no separation between our creative expression and how we experience passion now on the flip side unfortunately there are several examples in our culture today of mostly women who are too much in these lower chakras. They're too much in the emotional. And we have this stereotype of the crazy emotional woman. The woman that just freaks out about nothing, that bursts into tears over the littlest thing. And I think that because we see this portrayed in a lot of TV shows, especially reality TV, where women are just freaking out, we look at that and immediately push away from anything that could be related to that. Anything that could be even remotely over-emotional because of the negativity of that portrayal. And please understand that I'm not saying we should go there either. We don't want to swing the pendulum all the way over there because in that state, when someone is so overly emotional, so overly passionate. It's like trying to build a house on quicksand. Every sort of rational thought or every sort of structure that someone in that state tries to put to place in their own life simply gets washed away. And so we don't want to go there either. However, I do say that we have pushed so far into the rational that We now live in a world where we disregard the artist that is in each human being. You know, in my day job, I work at an academic company where I have the opportunity to speak to a lot of students about what they want to do as their careers, about what they want to do with their lives. And so many of them are not interested in going into any kind of artistic career because it doesn't make sense. 
That's what they'll say to me. Well, it doesn't make sense because of, you know, all of these reasons. Because it's not going to make money. Because it seems like a waste of time. Because I don't know if I'm good enough. Because of all of these things. And it saddens me. Because we have created a culture where only the people who are quote unquote good enough are allowed the pursuit of their artistry. And everyone else is told to put it aside because it quote unquote doesn't make sense. But that's the thing is that it never will. Your artistry and your creativity is not supposed to make sense. Nor, in my opinion, should you ask it to pay for your life. Because the moment that we justify our artistry based on whether or not it pays us is the moment we try to take something that is free-flowing and beautiful and sensual and creative and fit it into a box of the rational where it is not supposed to be. You'll always know if you're doing this because your creativity becomes painful. I did this for the longest time. I naturally am one of those people where I lean into creativity very naturally. I'm a writer. I'm a painter, a dancer, a yogi. And unfortunately, growing up in the dance world, it is that world where if you're not quote unquote good enough, if you can't make a career out of dance, it's all too easy to ask the question, then what are you doing here? If you're not good enough to be the best, then how can you justify pursuing artistry? And again, we've fallen into that trap where at what point was it necessary to justify it in the first place? Your creativity, if it brings you joy and peace and happiness, then cling to it. And you'll know if you're trying to rationalize it the moment that it doesn't do those things. The moment that you force it, whether internally or externally, whether it is within you, or someone else is asking you to justify it, you'll know because it will not feel good anymore. Your passion will turn sour and it will become torture to express yourself creatively. So I ask you to release that, to no longer require that part of yourself to meet the demands of this world. I imagine a world where there's a purposeful honoring of the artist within us all, where young and old no longer need to justify their creative expression or have it make sense. But instead, we honor the fact that it brought that person joy. And in joy, we find even a more fulfilling experience of our own humanity. To live a creative life is to live the life of an outlaw. If you look up outlaw in the dictionary, it will say that an outlaw is someone who rejects culture and lives outside of the law. In her book, Seasons of Moon and Flame, the author Daniel Dulski writes about this topic. And when I first read this, it was an eye-opening experience for me because I, for the longest time, probably like you, had related this word outlaw to the expressions of it in vogue or biker gangs or whatever it is, the Wild West. But in its most original form, outlaw is rejecting the laws of culture. To reject the laws of our culture means to reject the expectation that we rationalize our creativity. It is to reject linear time and reject the expectation that our performance determines our worthiness. The outlaw life rejects schedules, rejects the concepts of right and wrong, of judgment, says no to our ego, and no to the need to rationalize our creativity. In her book, Seasons of Moon and Flame, Daniel Dulski writes, We become outlaws by letting our lives breathe as much as possible, by feeling into the emptiness as much as the full, 
by pushing against and tenderizing the hard edges until they begin to give way. Reflection and rest are radical, and the very systems we wild hearts wish to counter rely entirely on our lack of both. To live an outlaw life is to lean into your creativity, to rest in that place of joy and happiness, and to reject the need to justify any of it. This concept was novel to me when I first read it when I was sick over the past few weeks, and leaning into this space has been absolutely amazing, and I invite you to join me. What are the spaces in your life that need to breathe, that need to step out of time and let the minutes expand and contract, to let the walls of judgment break down and move or draw or play in a way that makes no rational sense, but it feels good. As we bring this episode to a close, how are you feeling? I would love to know if you naturally are a creative person like me, or maybe you are someone who struggles to connect with your creativity, and that is something that you want to explore more. Creativity doesn't have to be something that comes from a craft store. It can be cooking. It can be the way you communicate with people. It can be the way you sit and read a book for the sheer joy of that experience. It can be the way that you tell stories to your children. It can even be the way that you're passionate about something that seems to be unrelated to creativity at all, like building cars or fishing, hunting, the way that you gather your friends and cheer around a football game, not because it makes rational sense, but because it brings you happiness. Lean into that space. I would love to hear what that experience is like for you. To connect with me, you can hit me up on the Soul Method Facebook page, which is at the Soul Method Yoga, or shoot me an email. My email is joelle, J O E L L E, at the Soul Method.com. I hope you all have an amazing weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic